Chapter 27 and beginning uh, at verse one, as we come to a conclusion of our series on the gospel, we definitely pray that you have been blessed by this series, that you've learned, that you've grown, uh, also that your faith has been uh, cemented and in your walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, with this, uh, on this lesson today, uh, I pray that you receive the, uh, the importance of not only knowing the gospel, uh, but holding on to it, uh, knowing the truth and not letting the truth go. Jeremiah chapter 27. And for those of you who are taking notes, uh, we will uh, we're going to go verse by verse uh, in line uh, and we'll be looking at uh, the next two chapters. Jeremiah. Uh, chapter 27 and beginning uh, at verse 1. For those of you who uh, desire context and understanding where we are, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 27, the children of Israel have sinned. The children of Israel have made a mistake. The children of Israel have violated God. And because they have violated God, God is going to punish them. But they are still God's children. Have you ever punished your children and still blessed them at the same time? It happened to me all the time. I would get a whooping and my mama would feed me. Uh, uh, amen. I would get I would get I would get punished and blessed. Uh, because I was still their child, I was still I still got the benefits of the house while at the same time was on restriction. And so God loved Israel, but God punished Israel by at the same time he restricted Israel. And so uh, when you do your punishment, you don't intend for your children to stay on punishment. Uh, matter of fact, there may even be some things that you're doing. Sometimes when you are looking uh, at your children, sometimes you will see a spirit. Sometimes Sometimes you will see certain people and you will see a certain spirit. Some of you have certain friends that you can't be as free with uh, because they'll start to disrespect you. And so sometimes what you have to do is you have to create boundaries and you have to create rules and so that you can have a healthy relationship. And so if you look at God, the father and you look at his children, sometimes you have some children they're real slick with their mouth. They, they're, they're real slick uh, with their mouth. And so what you don't do with these set of children is what you don't do is you don't joke with them or you don't go back and forth uh, because they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to, they, they, they lose uh, their, their, their status of child to adult. And so uh, there are some children, matter of fact, uh, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think my mother had a humorous bone until I I was a teenager. Uh, it wasn't until I was a teenager. I remember saying to my mom, I said, Mommy, I, I didn't even know you liked to laugh. Uh, because whenever she dealt with me, it was almost like she, she turned a switch on and she was real uh, serious. She was always serious. And I said, you know, I love my, I love my mama and my daddy, but my, my daddy must never laugh. I found out they were always laughing. It was just when she came out, she ain't laugh with me. She was real serious with me. It wasn't until I got older and I got out of my stages that she started to she started to joke with me a little bit. But I said, Mama, you cool. I didn't ever think I never <laughs> I never thought you was real cool. Mama, you real, you real cool. And uh, have you ever noticed when you get around certain people, it's not that you being fake, it's that you can't be a certain way with certain type of people because if you're that way, they'll disrespect you. Some of you are experiencing a certain version of God because of your attitude. 
And so when you hear some people say, oh, God has been so good to me. Oh, he said, and tears start running down their eyes and their hand raises and they say, oh, God is so good to me. Some of y'all are looking and saying, I wonder what that is. See, if you're in a rebellious state with God, what you experience is a certain side of God that is, you, matter of fact, a better, a better way to say it is, God responds to you depending on what state, mentality, and maturity you're at. And so some of us never get that version of God because we never fully commit, open up, and commit ourselves to his teaching. And so by the time you get to Jeremiah chapter 27, the children of Israel have been rebellious. They've been so rebellious, they are now going to get a version of God, but I need them to understand and they needed to know that the love of God didn't go away just because God needs to punish them. Because sometimes you got to get that spirit. Sometimes, um, could it be? that some of you are going through some of the storms that you're going through because God sees something in you that he needs to get out of you. And so some of you are looking for relief. Some of you are looking for peace. Some of you are looking just for God, if you could just take that thing away. But sometimes the thing that God places on you, and that's what we're in the text, sometimes the thing that God places on you is actually making you a better version of you. And that thing that God has on your shoulders is actually producing a certain type of you or a version of you that God enjoys. So what you don't realize is that burden that's on your shoulders has caused God to actually draw closer to you because I like it when this is on and you're dealing with it. You're much more focused. You pray more. You're much more diligent. And so sometimes we say, God, remove the yoke. But sometimes God don't want to remove the yoke. Right. Here we are in the text. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 27, verse one. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, say Jehoiakim. Yeah, I can't say it right either. In the beginning of the reign, in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah. Don't miss it. In the beginning of the reign, we're talking about a king. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, uh, who, who, who is his daddy? The son of Josiah, the king. All right. Are y'all with me? Because I don't want y'all to get lost with these names. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of the reign. He, he just started his kingship. Who is his daddy? His daddy is Josiah, the king of Judah, came this word. So the Bible says, uh, matter of fact, another way of saying it is God spoke in the time of Ronald Reagan. Uh, God spoke in the time of JFK. Uh, God spoke in the time of Obama. Basically what the Bible is letting us know is who was running the government at this time when God spoke, right? We all on the same page in verse one. So God spoke when these leaders were in position. That's how you would read verse one. Uh, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord. And this is what God said during this reign of government. We're in verse two. Thus saith the Lord to me. Now, God spoke to Jeremiah in the reign of Jehoiakim. And when God spoke to Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, this is what the Lord said to me. Make the bonds and yokes. Uh, another word for bonds is straps, right? I want, you to, I want you to put some straps on the yoke. Tie, uh, tie them together and put them on your, on your neck. Uh, Jeremiah, if we would do this in present time, Jeremiah, if, t if Jeremiah was here today, Jeremiah would be a preacher, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, the prophets, and so, but if in present, time, in present time, he would be a preacher. So here's what the Lord said to the preacher. I want you to go find a yoke. If we could put a yoke. He said, listen, I want you to, I want you to put a yoke. A matter of fact, go, go to verse three. Go to verse three. Uh, and then he says, uh, and, and send them uh, to the king of Edom and to the king of Moab and to the king of the Ammonites and to the king of Cyrus and to the king of Zidon by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem uh, unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. Verse four. 
and command them to say unto their masters, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, and thus shall you say to your masters. Verse five, I have made the earth, the man, the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Verse six, and now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field have I given him also to serve. Don't miss the message. Don't miss the, don't miss the message. I want you to get a yoke. I want you to get a, a wooden yoke. And preacher, what I want you to do, preacher, what I want you to do is I want you to take that yoke. Now he said, I put some straps on it, okay? Cause don't, don't let that thing fall off. Don't let that thing fall off. He said, I want you to put some straps on it. And what I want you to do is, uh, I want you to put that yoke around your neck, okay? I want you to put that yoke around your neck. And I want you to let that, I want you to let that thing just sit, just, just sit on your neck. It's a, it's a wooden yoke, it's a wooden yoke. Uh, now normally, uh, humans don't, Humans don't wear yokes, right? Matter of fact, already this is starting to feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> this, don't, this, don't, this is not what I want to do. Uh, but he says, listen, I want you to put this yoke around your neck and normally this will go on an animal, but I don't want you to put it on an animal. He says, I want you to put it on, I want you to put it on your neck. I want you to put it on your neck and strap it up real nice. I want you to strap it up, strap it up real nice. And so on next Sunday, on next Sunday, if you saw me walk in, I would walk in just like this. Hey, how y'all doing? It's good to see everybody. Y'all come on in. Y'all have seats. Brother, it's good to see you. It's good to see you this morning everywhere. Uh, please turn your Bibles to Matthew and, and I'll go ahead and preach it. And I, I know some of the visitors will be wondering, what? What is that thing that's around your neck? And then after service, some of y'all may run into me uh, at Kroger, or you may run into me uh, uh, getting some biscuits or something, uh, earn biscuits and sausage. Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, and getting something to eat. And if you see me in the grocery store, I would say, hey, sister. <laughs> Hey, sister, how you doing? It's good to, it's good to see you. Some of you may run into me at 7-Eleven getting them wings, getting them wings at 7-Eleven and some gas, because you get wings and gas uh, at 7-Eleven. And you see me at 7-Eleven, and I'm over there, and I'm trying to pump up. Uh, and I, I would say, hey, how, how you doing? It'd be very difficult to try to get in my vehicle. Uh, uh, and, and if you see me struggling, I said, you may say, you want to take that off? I said, no, 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 I can't take this off. No, 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 I can't tell. No, 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 I got I to gotta carry this. I got to carry this. Uh, for anybody who come in late in the service, let them know what I'm doing. I'm not over here acting. I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm in the text. I'm, I'm in the scripture. Um, and so imagine, uh, imagine everywhere you go. Uh, showers are difficult. Showers. Showers be, be, be difficult. Uh, he's supposed to carry it. He's supposed to carry it every day. He's supposed to wear it every day. And you can imagine, this starts to be a, a weight and a burden and a, and it starts to, wait, you start to feel it. Man, matter, no, no matter who you talk to, and can you imagine everybody that you talk to is looking at you, but they looking at the, and every time he preach, every, every time he preach, uh, they, gotta, they gotta watch this yoke on his on this neck. All right. uh, and then the message that God gives, we back in the text, the message, because yeah, I got to take this off, yeah, I got to take this off. Uh, the message uh, that God gives in uh, Jeremiah chapter 27, if we go back, uh, he says, listen, I want you to go and tell your leaders, I want you to go tell all your, your masters, we're in verse 6. Uh, oh, tell all your masters uh, this message. And now I have given all these lands to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to know you are the children of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar is the king of Babylon. It's another nation. Yeah. But I want to let you know you sinned. You messed up. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I need all of you to take all of your possessions. I don't want you to revolt. I don't want you to murmur. I don't want you to complain. From now on, until I tell you to, I want you to submit yourself under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. Now I know what some of you are gonna say. I don't wanna go over there. 
I want to stay where I am. Hey, right now, I want every one of you to pick up and submit and give your possessions. I want you to give uh, your resources to King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to let him come in and rule you. You said, Brother Williams, I'm free. I don't want nobody, to, but you messed up. And I need you to do what I'm going to tell you to do. I need you to submit yourself under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is not an Israelite, but I'm using him to correct you. Some of y'all right now, you got some people in your life that are not godly, but God has brought them into your life. So get you straight. Some of y'all looking at your phone right now. Well, that's what your prayer. That's who that's that. That's that one right there. You trying to get them out your life. You trying to remove yourself from them. You trying to get from under. And sometimes the Lord will use an unbeliever to straighten out a believer. So he says, Nebuchadnezzar is my servant. I'm using him to get you straight. You ain't going to like it, but I need you to submit. The whole time this message is being delivered, he got a yoke on his neck. Jeremiah got a yoke on his neck he's teaching. And he's heavy. It's, it's starting to weigh on him. The Bible says in verse 7, and all the nations shall serve him and his son and his son's sons until the very time of his land come and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Verse eight. Therefore, go back to verse, uh, uh, I'm sorry, go back to verse uh, seven. The Bible says at the end of verse seven, and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Listen, everybody and all of the governments of Israel and the land round about all had to submit themselves under Nebuchadnezzar. That's humbling. That's humbling. At one point you used to be here and now you got to humble yourself and submit yourself under somebody because you tripped and you were disobedient and you didn't obey. The Bible says in verse eight, and it shall come to pass that that nation and kingdom which shall not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of, of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke. You don't want to do it. You don't want to, you don't want to wear the yoke, uh, the jewelry. You, you don't want to put the yoke, you don't want to put the wooden yoke on, on your neck. He says, anyone that does not want to do that, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I'm going to punish. Now listen, I done already told you. I want to be back in good standing with you. Do what I tell you to do and I'll bless you. But if you don't want to take the punishment, if you think the punishment is too much, then you're going to see another side of me and it's going to be my wrath. The Bible says, and I will punish, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword, and I'm going to punish you with famine and with the pestilence. What, what, what the Lord says is the way that I'm going to punish you, I'm going to punish you with sickness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punish you with violence. Then the Bible says, until I have consumed them by the hand. When he says, until I have consumed them, until I get everybody who don't want to submit. I need you to submit. Now, this is the word. I got one amen. No, everybody, everybody else don't want to say amen. Somebody say, I don't like. <laughs> and you can imagine the children of Israel. They saying, listen, we don't like this. Matter of fact, we like last week's sermon. We don't like this week's sermon. We don't like the stuff that you teaching because the stuff that you teaching means that we gonna have to suffer. Now, if we obey it, we gonna get blessed. But if we disobey it, then we got the sword, famine, and pestilence that's coming. The Bible says in verse 9, now God continues his message and he says this, and this is the part I don't want you to miss. Therefore, hearken. Hearken means to listen. Well, grandma used to say hearken. Hearken not ye to your prophets. 
nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers. I want to tell you, don't listen to your enchanters. Don't go to any sorcerers. I want to let you know that there are prophets and there are diviners, there are dreamers, there are enchanters, there are sorcerers. There are people who do play with black magic. There are people who do dive into, God doesn't say those things are real. He says, just don't go to them. Amen. Don't get your palms red. Stop looking at your horoscope. Somebody says, this is real. Never said it wasn't real. God says, just don't go to it. God says, don't, don't, don't use it. And so uh, the Bible says, uh, nor to your sorcerers, uh, because here's the thing, you've heard my word. And as you've heard my word, uh, one of the problems that you may have is, um, and, and, and it's in our human nature, when somebody tell you something, don't we want to seek two and three other people's advice? Well, somebody said, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to go on ahead, get up and get your life together and go in and go in and take care of that business. And you're like, hmm, that's interesting. You'll go to five other people. Hey, what you think? Hey, and what you think? And, and hey, what you think? And, and hey, what you think? Uh, and, and then you'll find out uh, that, that uh, out of the six people that you went through, five other people said the same thing. Which one we tend to go with? The one who said something different. See, I was looking for advice. No, you was looking for somebody to say what you wanted to hear. So here's what God is saying. I, got, I already gave you the word. The word is clear. Here's what I'm telling you to, not to do. There is no need to go seek advice. I said what I said. You don't need another opinion. You don't need to see it from a different angle. The reason you will go to a sorcerer or a reason that you will go to a dreamer or an enchanter is so that somebody can speak into your personal life. God said, listen, this message is for everybody. So you don't need to seek personal uh, guidance for what you should do and how you should move. Right. Uh, what, what, what do you what do you think is, is, is in my future in the why would you go ask a sorcerer? Why would you go ask a card reader and you don't go pray to God? Do you know you can't mix prayer and enchanters? You can't mix prayer and dreamers at the same time. He says so. So God is very clear. Don't go to another preacher. Don't go to another because I already talked to I already talked to Jeremiah. Don't go to another prophet. Don't get a seek. Don't 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 seek it. Um, uh, some people do that sometimes when they read scripture and then they read the scripture and they say, "Ooh, I don't like that." And then they go to somebody else and they say, uh, "What you get out of that verse?" Mm, well, it's kind of clear. It said, "Don't lie." <laughs> it's, just, it's just I don't I don't know how to how the others to look at it. Do not lie. That's kind of that's kind of clear. And they go to somebody else and say, "What do you think about lying?" Um, I said what I said. <laughs> Bible says in verse ten. He said, "Let me tell you what they're gonna do. They going they gonna preach to you. That's what prophets are. They're gonna preach to you." but they're gonna prophesy a lot unto you. If you go and start to seek some other, they're gonna prophesy a lot unto you to remove you far from the land. Let me tell you what they're gonna do. They're gonna give you a message, you're gonna believe the message, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up making some moves, and the moves that you end up making is gonna take you out of your blessing. They're gonna remove you far from your land, that I should drive you out and that you should perish. So here's the dangerous thing. If you hear my word, me and you gonna be close. But the problem is, if you start getting advice from other people and you started hearing that, based upon you giving your ear to other people, God said, I gotta remove you from me. Don't let other people cause our relationship to be damaged. 
I gave a word. I need you to hear the word. But if you open up your heart and let other people speak into uh, uh, what we have, it's going to destroy. And then he says, look at the end of the verse. Then he says, I should drive you. He said, now nah, I got to drive you out. Now, I don't want to drive you out. But do you know why I need to drive you out? I need to drive you out because you didn't believe my word. Well, I was just seeking a, a, a second opinion. You do that with humans, but you didn't trust me. You, you planned me as like I was bluffing. He says, now I got to drive you out. Uh, uh, married couples, y'all, y'all know this. You don't. You don't entertain other voices in your marriage. You, 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 know, you don't let other people's well, what I think you should do and what I, first of all, you're not in this. You, you're not in it. You don't know the nuances. You, you, you're not aware of the dynamic. Uh, man, I wouldn't take that if it, man, you single. You don't know what you, you, you can give me if I, girl, if I was you and you not, you know, he, he picked me. He didn't pick you. He's, you not, you not me. You not me. You don't need to hear with all of this. And so he says, listen, because you entertain, I'm going to drive you out. Verse 11. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke. He says, now listen, if you're willing to carry the burden, if you're willing to carry the, and if you're willing to put the yoke on your neck, what's going to happen? The Bible says of the king of Babylon, and serve him. Those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell there. He said, listen, if you obey me and carry the burden. Sometimes what we want to do is we want to walk through life without trouble. We want to walk through life without any difficulty. And we feel like if we experience any level of difficulty, then, then maybe something's wrong. Because God, you're supposed to give me peace and I'm not supposed to have any uncomfortableness in my life. He says, listen, if you can be able to carry the yoke, then you can dwell in the land and be blessed. But if you're not willing to submit, he says, you'll be leaving and I'll drive you out. I won't just drive you out of the land I'll drive you from my protection my resources my love my grace you will be on the outside and not on the inside what I want you to do is I want you to be able to endure and take it the Bible says in verse 12 And I spake also to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and do what? And live. Verse 13. Why will you die? He states. He says, why? Why will you? Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword and by, uh, by the famine spoken against uh, the nation that will not serve uh, the king of Babylon? He said, listen, what I want you to do is I want you to submit. Now we're in chapter 28 and I want you to go to verse 1. So everybody submitted. Everybody yielded. Now, it got to be a difficult thing for Jeremiah to walk around with this wooden yoke on his neck all day. And he's over there preaching God's word, saying this is what you need to do. Hey, y'all, God has told us that we need to submit. God has told us that we need to walk around with this yoke. You can imagine his his traps may be getting big, but his head is getting weary and his back. You know, this is this a lot. Uh, matter of fact, you yearn and wish for the day. You yearn and wish for the day you could take that yoke off your, your neck. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 1, and it came to pass the same year, some time had passed, but it's the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zed Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month that Hananiah, say Hananiah, yeah, Hananiah, Jeremiah was the prophet that received the message from God and he put the yoke on his what? He put the yoke on his neck. The same year, another prophet came into town. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I got a word from God that I want to share with y'all on today. 
Y'all ready to hear it? Here's Hananiah. Say Hananiah. Hananiah. Jeremiah is in the audience. <laughs> this prophet, Hananiah, comes from afar, comes in the town and says, I've spoken to God and I got a word from God that I want to preach on y'all. A guest preacher. Jeremiah has already preached the message, walking around with the yoke. A guest preacher comes in, named what? Hananiah. Hananiah. Prophet Hananiah comes through, and oh, he got a mighty word from God. Y'all ready to hear it? I'm ready to hear this message. Uh, the Bible says that Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord. Where are they? They in the house of the Lord. They have in worship. They singing, oh, how I love Jesus. And you can imagine Jeremiah over there rocking with his yoke on his neck. Hananiah gets up to preach. He's in the house of the Lord and there is a word that he's going to give. And the Bible says he comes in the house of the Lord and in the presence of the priest and all the people. I mean, everybody's listening and everybody's there. Hananiah steps forth, we're in verse two. And the Bible says, thus speak of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I wanna let y'all know right now, this yoke that you've been carrying, I wanna let you know that today, your breakthrough is coming through. Come on. I wanna let y'all know this week, I wanna let y'all know this week, one of y'all are going to be a millionaire. Yes, I can feel it. Yes, I can feel it. One of you. I want to let you know you're not going to struggle no more. Amen. 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 You ain't going to struggle no more. Some of y'all, I feel a new house coming. I feel a new house coming. Somebody, somebody's going to get a new house. Somebody's going to get it. Yes, yes, yes. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Hey, listen, listen. God is going to drop that new vehicle right down in your driveway. Right down in your driveway. Somebody, I want to let you know that that sickness is gone. Some of y'all got cataracts. Some of y'all can't see straight. Some of y'all can't. Vision is coming back. I want to let y'all know right now. Vision, vision is coming. I want to let you know that yoke that you've been carrying. Marian, you ain't got to worry about it no more. The Bible says that broke. I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. You ain't got to be under number chuck, number chuck, number chuck, number chuck. You ain't got to be under number chuck no more. The Bible says in verse three, the Bible says in verse three, uh, uh, he came, uh, he's speaking, he says, within two full years, amen, don't miss your shout now, don't miss your shout, within two full years, you going to get it. You're going to get it all back, y'all. You're going to get it all. I know you lost some things, and I know you've been through some things, and I know they took some things. I want to let you know that in the next 24 months, you finna get it. You finna get it all back. You finna get it all. And, and I can imagine the whole church said, oh, my goodness. Right? Uh, and, and the Bible says, and he says, uh, uh, Hananiah says, in the next uh, two full years, I'm going to bring again to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. You're going to get all the vessels, all that nice stuff that you lost. You finna get all that back. I know you had to give it to Nubachuk Niza, but I want to let you know that in the next two years, Nubachuk going to give it all back to you. It's going to be released because the yoke of Nubachuk has been broke. This is the year. This is the year, your jubilee. Then the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. He took your stuff, didn't he? Didn't you lose some stuff? You, he took that stuff from you. But I want to let you know that the things that the devil took from you, you're going to get it all back in two years. We're in verse four. And I will bring again to the place uh, of Jehoiniah, the son of Jehoiahim, the king of Judah, and all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord, I will break the yoke. The message that I have on this morning Amen. is that the yoke of Babylon is broken. Oh, Hananiah, it's good to see you on this morning. Hananiah said, the yoke is broken. You don't have to suffer no more. The Bible says in verse 5, then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet, he in the audience, y'all, because they in the house of the Lord. He in work. Jeremiah is sitting in the audience 
around like the fourth row or something like that. I don't know, maybe on the center front row. Uh, and I, in the presence uh, of the priest and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, verse six, that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said what? Amen. Don't miss it. <laughs> even the prophet Jeremiah said what? Amen. Jeremiah said, oh my God, my neck has been hurting. He said what? Amen. He said, amen. amen. Jeremiah, sit down. <laughs> that ain't what God said. The Lord, Jeremiah over there shouting saying, the Lord do so. Oh yes, Lord do it. The Lord perform thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. Verse seven. I mean, Hananiah is tearing up the place. I mean, he preaching a revival that they needed a long time. I mean, this is some kind of revival that they have. Nevertheless, hear thou this word that I speak in thy ears and in the ears of all his people. Hananiah, listen, I need you to hear this message because this message is for you this morning. The Bible says the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against kingdoms and wars and evils of pestilence uh, and of pestilence. Verse nine, the prophet which prophesies of peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. Now, here's the thing about a prophet. You only knew the difference between a preacher and a prophet. When a prophet preached to you, you had to wait for what he said to come to pass in order to determine if he was a real prophet. The difference with a preacher is, my job is not to tell you the future. My job is to tell you what thus saith the Lord. My job is to tell you what God has said. The prophet would preach to tell you what God is going to do. That's the difference between a prophet and, and, a, and a preacher. And so this prophet is saying, hey, this is what God is going to do. Uh, Jeremiah said, okay, well, this is great. Hey, Amen. Loved your message. Uh, Y'all give him and I a round of applause. I thought that was a wonderful message. And we know this that the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known. When the, word, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, then the prophet shall be known that the Lord have what? Truly sent him. So now they gotta wait. But one of the things that they're doing is they gave ear, they gave attention, they celebrated, even Jeremiah said, amen. Verse 10, verse 10. Then Hananiah, the prophet, he took the what? He took the yoke. Last illustration. He about to close out the sermon. Last illustration. The Bible says he took the yoke from off the what? From the prophet Jeremiah's neck. He said, give, give, give me that, Jeremiah. Uh, you can imagine Jeremiah. Uh, it feels so good. <laughs> it feels so good. He got this illustration. He's standing in front of the whole congregation. He takes the yoke and the Bible says off of Jeremiah's neck. And then he did, he did his last illustration. My, my knee ain't strong enough to get. <laughs> I need y'all to visualize. I need y'all. <laughs> I was gonna bless you, I was gonna do it, but I, uh, I ain't did my squats. I know this is not <laughs> leg extensions. You know, you gotta. The Bible says he took it and he, he broke the yoke. He broke the, now the yoke is in front of the congregation. It's been broken in pieces. They see all of this and you can imagine the praise and the celebrate, the amen. I wanna let you know it's okay to say amen in church, but it's a, a they say amen. amen. The Bible says in verse 11, and Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, and even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations. And I want to let you know, within the space, because remember, a prophet speaks in the future. Within the space of two full years, 
And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah over there said, hey, man, I love that servant. That was, hey, that was a powerful servant. You should have been there. You missed it. Hananiah preached the house down. Jeremiah, you're looking different. Oh, yeah, the yoke is broken. <laughs> you ain't hear the message? The yoke is broken. King Nebuchadnezzar is going down and we going home. The Bible says in verse 12. Word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. <laughs> it's, 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 that, it's that after service. It's, it's that after service conversation with God. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you 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 hear a sermon and you know, but then you gotta go home and eat that, and you gotta you gotta home and digest that thing, and God start speaking to you in your life and your car, and you start having, whoa, wait a minute. Then the word of the Lord came after worship service. Unto, notice God didn't interrupt worship. Notice God didn't interrupt the message. Sometimes, sometimes, God will step back just to see how you're going to act. Sometimes God said, well, why you even let him? Listen, I already gave you the word. Sometimes, you just want to see how a person behaves. Some, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes at, at school the kids act up. Sometimes the school can, and sometimes the, the officials will call the parent. Sometimes they'll, they'll call the parent, and the parent will show up. And when the and when the parent show up, the parent won't won't let the child know that they're there. Sometimes the parent will come and just look in the class. Some say, what you looking at? I'm looking at mine. I'm just trying to see. I'm trying to see. Because sometimes your, your children act differently around other people than they're around. I know they your little angel. <laughs> That's your baby. But ain't nothing about them that says baby when they leave your presence. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing about them that's sweet when they not in your uh, arena. And so sometimes what you have to do, sometimes you just, sometimes you want to not, sometimes you'll just come in and you just have to, you just have to watch them when you see them, but they don't, when they don't see you. Sometimes it's good to observe people when you're not around. You want to know, how do you act when you, when you're not in my not in my cuz cuz I'm wondering I think the world of you but everybody else don't like you is it because I get a certain version are you putting on the front with me but you act this way with everybody uh, else and so God gave the word God specifically said don't entertain anybody else and then God watched and he watching Jeremiah do what Shouting, carrying on, saying amen, ain't that a word? God said, okay, cool. Jeremiah, can I talk to you for a second? And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. After that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the, you gonna let him take that yoke off you? I told you to wear it. There's a reason I told you to wear it. You gonna let him break it? You ain't gonna say nothing? Are you over there shouting? from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah saying, verse 13, go and tell Hananiah saying, that's self the Lord. Now this is what I want you to do since you like listening to sermons. Let me tell you, let me tell you, what, let me tell you what I want you to do. He says, now nah, I got another sermon that I want to be able to give you. I want you to go back and go get that guest preacher Hananiah. Go get that guest prophet. Go, and this is what I want you to say. Thus saith the Lord. I want you to let them know that I said this. You have broken the yokes of wood. Hmm. Yeah. This is. See, I was asking you to carry. I was asking you to carry wood. I was asking you to carry wood. But what I want you to do. Uh. But now. But thou shalt make for them yokes of. This was easier. But since you don't want to. <laughs> since you don't want to wear it, the wood. Now we're going to make it 
heavier. Now we're going to make it iron. Can you imagine trying to go to the bathroom with a yoke of wood? But now, but now I got to carry this. <laughs> now I got to carry this, this iron on my, it's torture. You didn't want to hear what I had to say in the beginning. So now what I want you to do is I want you to carry this yoke of iron on your neck. Because why? You didn't heed my word. You thought I was joking. You didn't take my word seriously. You took it for a joke. So I'm going to let you know how it feels. Maybe, maybe you don't feel the burden that you should feel for my weight. Uh, does anybody know what the word honor means? The word, the word honor, uh, one definition of the word honor means weight. It, it means weight. Uh, when somebody speaks, when, when, when somebody speaks, um, and, and, and they tell you, um, hey, I need you to come here. Your response communicates how much you honor them. If somebody tells you to come here and you said, uh, I'll be there as soon as I finish. That shows how much weight that they have. There are some people that can tell you, hey, I need to see you. And you know what you do? You drop everything that you're doing and say, I got to go. Someone said, where you going? I just got called. I just got summoned. It depends on who calls you. So if somebody calls you and you say, one minute, I'm on the phone. Right. Uh, if my if when, when I was growing up, if my daddy said, uh, 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 hey son, get off the phone. I need to. I need to. I would never. I, w I would never do. Because you know I'm on the wall. You know, because you got to stay on the wall. Uh, <laughs> amen. Amen. Just one second. I gotta. I gotta make a call. I would never put my finger up. I, I would never put my finger up because. How he saw himself, any delay is disrespect. I, I want you to, this is very important. The way my father saw himself when he requested his children to do something, he expected immediate response. Not because of how we saw ourselves, but because of how he saw himself. He knew who he was to us. So if I'm asking you to do something, there's nothing that you're doing that's more important than my word. So when the father would speak, what he expected is for us to drop what we were doing and respond and what that also communicated anybody or anything or anybody we were talking to or anything that we were doing what we communicated is there is a word that's more important than you yes. we could be outside playing basketball heads up to the win on yesterday for North Colony's basketball team <laughs> If we were outside playing basketball and my father stepped outside and say, come here, boy, come here. I don't care what I was in the middle of doing. <laughs> Didn't matter. I could be in midair. <laughs> <laughs> I could be in midair, but if my father said, boy, come here, I had to stop. They said, where are you going? My daddy is calling me. 
because of how he saw himself he demanded immediate response can you imagine how god feels when you read the word of god and it takes you three months to do it god. you you know what you need to do but it takes convincing and a whole pep rally in order for you to let certain relationships go to let certain toxicity and, and toxic behaviors go it take you forever to turn around and do what you supposed to do God spoke way back in January you thought about it in March you say I ain't quite ready in May it's taken you all year long to do and follow a word he already spoke to you when you hear the sermon you say I already know that but the reason why you probably need to hear it again is because what you know is what you don't do what good is knowing something that you don't do that you don't apply he said so since you don't like hearing my word and you over there got real excited I didn't hear you say amen in chapter 27 when I told you and I preached the word to you in tw chapter 27 I didn't see you jumping up and down saying amen ain't that the truth Somebody else comes and gives you another word and now you are all excited walking around yoke free Nah So since you don't like the wood I want you to get the iron And put that on your neck And the Bible says that thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but you shall make them for yokes of iron verse 14 for thus of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these names. I want to let you know, you make it harder for yourself. You know what I've come to realize? I know life is not that hard. We make it hard. Some of us, our lives are hard and we walking around with iron on our necks because of decisions we made in 2009 and 2010. How many of you have said, if I would have just listened, if I would have just been obedient, how many of you would be in a different situation if you just said, if I'd have just waited? I should have prayed about that thing. I was too hasteful and I wanted to do my, what, what, would, have, what would have happened if I would have just been obedient. How many of you have ever gone through a storm and in the middle of going through your storm, your mama's words came right back to you? I knew better. How many of you ever had a flashback and said, they said nothing was out here? How many of you had to go outside to find out there was nothing outside? And you wasted all that money and all that time and all those resources and you created this whole lifestyle and community of people only to realize I ain't had no business doing that. The Lord said you're going to suffer. Last scripture I want to take you to is Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6 and we'll close. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, the, Apost the Apostle Paul is speaking to the churches in Galatia. And as he's preaching to the churches in Galatia, these are individuals who are Christians. So he's not speaking to non-Christians. He's speaking to those that are Christians, which means they've already been preached to. They've already heard the word. They've already been uh, to worship. They already know the songs. They already know the protocol. They are very familiar. With. Basically, what I'm saying is they have already obeyed the gospel. So he's supposed to be speaking to an educated crowd. So in Galatians chapter uh, one uh, and beginning at verse six, he gets to a part of the letter to the churches of Galatia and he shares, uh, he has an emotional reaction to their receptivity of the gospel. 
And the Bible says in verse six, he says, I marvel. I marvel that you are so, I marvel that you are so soon removed. Uh, what is he saying? You heard the gospel. You heard about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you know that Jesus died on the cross for you. You've received that. Well, what's the problem? You know that there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And you know that by one spirit are we all baptized in the one church. And you know that uh, we are supposed to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And, and we know that we are the church collectively. Uh, we are Christians individually. When somebody asks you who you are, you say, I'm a Christian. When somebody asks you what church you're a part of, you say, I'm a part of the church of Christ. When they say, when they ask you, why do you pray? Why do you sing? Why do you? Because God wants glory. And these are our acts of worship that we give unto God. Hey, how come y'all don't do this? And how come you've already received the Bible classes and the teaching? And you know the importance of worshiping God and giving God your best and giving your first fruits unto the Lord. And then he comes to verse six and says, but I'm shocked. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto a, another gospel. Verse 7 says, which is, there's not another. There, there's not another. In verse 7, the Bible says there's, there's not another gospel. Then, then what happened? There, but there be some that what? I want to tell you right now, you got to be careful of what you listen to spiritually. It can sound good, but if you're not careful, it can be another gospel. The delivery can be like the prophet Hananiah. He can preach the house down. The, prophet, the problem is the message is wrong. You can't change the message. Because if you change the message, you change the blessing. I want to be blessed. Well, the blessing is connected to the, the, the correct doctrine. I am not the only preacher that you can listen to. You can listen to many preachers as long as they preach the gospel. Matter of fact, you can have a list of 15 preachers that you listen to throughout the week all around. That don't bother me at all. I'm still gonna eat dinner. That don't bother me at all. My problem is, if you're eating something, that's gonna make you sick. If you preach it, it is the bread of life. So if you eating off of something that's not from the Lord, that's not the Lord's bread you eating. So he says in Galatians chapter one, he says, there are some people who came among you and troubled you. And you know what they told you? They told you, God don't care what church you, God don't care what you believe. God, the only thing God cares about is that you love him. That sounds good. But where is the scripture that says God don't care? God don't care how you come to worship and God don't care about clothes and God don't care about how you sing. That sounds actually good. It sounds like a real accepting God, just like Hananiah's message sounded really like God was finna give breakthrough. God don't want you to be under no, no yoke. God wants to deliver you. Jeremiah, give me your yoke. You're free today. It sounds like a good message. The problem is, if you listen to it, the next season of your life is iron. So he says, there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. There are some preachers today that preach a message and it feels like everybody can be saved. When the scripture says, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way. It's not broad 
and it's not wide because many people are go there at and they will perish. There is a straight gate that you're going to, matter of fact, it takes work and discipline to stick with the word of God when you having so many different messages. It's easy to say, I guess it don't matter. I'll just pick the one of my choice. I'll just go with whatever makes me feel good. That's not how you pick a church. You don't pick a church by how many smiles you get at the front door. And hopefully they smiled at you this morning. But that shouldn't be the reason that you are here. You should be here because the word of God is going to be preached. If at any moment this gospel message starts to deter, you either need to raise your hand, you need to be able to call a meeting or whatever you need to be able to do. But don't just sit here and eat the food. If you come next week and we change the name of the church to the house of Satan, don't just say, well, don't just sit in here. We just going to cook to death. The Lord just going. If you see any changes or alterations in the sermon or in the message, don't just sit there and be like, well, that was different. I've never seen that before. Matter of fact, it's like a doctor's office. If the doctor come in and says, I've never seen that before. I need another doctor. <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> you knew something's wrong. It's just like worship. There's nothing this morning that should be brand new to you. Amen. You shouldn't leave worship service and be like, do you know that they prayed and prayer shouldn't be new to you? Amen. Matter of fact, I want to let you know next Sunday, we're going to sing and we're going to pray and we're going to get in God's word. I want to let you know the word. I'm not going to come with another edition. I'm not going to bring another book. I'm not going to I'm not going to bring another manual. It's going to be the same word. There's some people that's going to get bored with this. And you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, hey, why, why don't we do something new? Why don't we do something different? I don't care what restaurant some of y'all go to, y'all still order chicken fingers and fries. <laughs> you, you be at the sushi restaurant. Uh, let me get them uh, chicken. <laughs> let me get them chicken fingers. Let me get them chicken fingers and fries. Sweet potato fries. Sweet 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 potato fries. Let me get the sweet potato fries. <laughs> let me close here. Verse eight. Verse eight. But though we or an angel from heaven come down. Don't miss this. He says, I don't care if an angel from heaven comes down. Matter of fact, I'm done. If you're in need prayer, raise your hand. I usher to come to you. Uh, I, I want to let you know. He says, I don't care if right now the sky opened up and an angel came down and said, hey, y'all, it don't matter you can worship God. I don't care if you're a Muslim or a Buddhist. I don't care if you take communion or you don't take communion. I don't care if you want to sing. I don't care if you want to do it like this and do it. As long as you call on God, you good. If an angel from heaven came down and said that message, the Bible says, or the we, that means if another apostle came up and said, I have a message for you and it's different. The Bible says unto you then which we have preached unto you, let him be what? It's a curse message. Do you know if I change the message, a curse is put on my life? Amen. There may be something that we need to talk even more about curses and, and, and those things. But the Bible says anybody who changes the word or omits it, a curse is applied. Amen. I want to let you know, this is not the Old Testament. This is New Testament. This, this is current right now. The Bible says a curse is applied. Uh, the Bible says uh, that which was preached unto you, let him be a curse. Verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other what? 
if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be what? Let him be a curse. Can't change the message. As you go throughout the furtherance of this week, I want you to be confirmed in your faith. I want you to be confirmed in your teaching. I don't want you to let go of those things. Maybe someone has come and perverted it. Maybe, maybe some, maybe it's somewhere along the way, or along the way, you got lax in your beliefs, you got lax in your convictions, but you know what you've been taught. And he says, I, I marvel that you used to stand, but now you've been removed. It's one Lord, there's one faith, and there's one baptism. And I want to let you know something, that ain't never going to change. Amen. That ain't never going to change. The Lord died for our sins. I don't care what the world says. The world starts talking about the universe and the trees and there may be, maybe there's some, no, 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 it's God. It's not the universe. It's not the universe, it's God. It's God and Jesus, Jesus Christ was sent to die for our sins. If you're here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, we encourage you to do that now. We encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. In order for you to do that, you have to believe that Jesus died for you, that he was buried and that he rose again. Jesus shed his blood to pay your debt. If you will be willing to turn around and repent, confess he is the son of God and by his commandment. The Bible says in Acts chapter two in verse 38, he says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit today. On today, you can receive a gift. On today, you can receive the blessing of eternal salvation. But I want to let you know that if you're in, and all to those who are saints, if you are in Christ, be firmly rooted and don't, don't move. I know there's a lot of stuff that's going on in our world today. I know there's a lot of different teachings and different variations. You can't stand on something you don't study. Amen. You need to know what you believe. And when you in that circle and when you at home and when you amongst friends and when you amongst your, uh, when you at the family reunion and when you go visit and they start talking, you say, listen, I can't stand with you. You got to be strong enough in that room to say, I can't go that way. Amen. This message is given unto you.